sheet. We need to change the top uh, of the, uh, before we get started, we need to change the top of the sheet. It's so it the calendar year. 5.05 oh. on Monday, March 3rd, I'll call this meeting the Public Safety Committee to order. And um, first thing I'd like to do is acknowledge that we are being uh, videotaped here by Northampton Community Television and acknowledge members present, uh, Councillor Jesse Adams, Councillor uh, David Murphy, and Councillor Bill Dwight on the way. Um, I'll ask for any public comment, and there being none, I'll ask if there is a motion to approve the minutes of February 3rd. So moved. Second. Okay, any additions, corrections, or otherwise? All those in favor of approval? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carried. And uh, this afternoon we're hearing from Lou Hasbrook of the Building Department. And Lou, you are on. Nice to be here. Um, the, uh, and, and I mean that too. But the, uh, so we have, the Building Department had a um, Construction activity in Northampton was busy in calendar year 13. I decided we'd pre I'd present a calendar year picture because otherwise it would be the last fiscal year, which is quite a long time ago. Um, and during the calendar year, we, we issued more permits than the department's ever issued in a 12-month period, and the estimated cost of construction was uh, you know, significant, and uh, only one year only one other year has had a higher estimated cost of construction than that was the year they built the um, uh, engineering building at Ford, Ford Hall, which was almost $70 million in and of itself. Um, we did uh, more periodic inspections, both uh, the city has, still has 73 liquor licenses that got inspected. Um, we did another 156 buildings. That's a few more of uh, that we've done in the past. Um, and we responded to 121 complaints that took more than, you know, a, a day to resolve. Those are complaints that we had to uh, do follow-up. couldn't be just done in one phone call. Um, 63 were public safety related, either fire department, police department, or uh, building code issues and uh, 58 were uh, zoning issues. That's what we did last on our summer vacation. Um, do we have a question? I do. Well, just uh, maybe you could give a little bit more uh, another example of those that are public safety related. Um, they, you know, they range from burnt uh, first water pipes to uh, uh, structure fires. Cars drove, into, cars drove into a number of different buildings. That's a perennial favorite. How did the um, how did the inspections go for the uh, liquor establishments? I know that's been ongoing. Have they? Have the proprietors sort of gotten the hang of what it is you want to see, and are they going smoother, and are they ready for you? And yeah, it's gone. It's gone really well. This is the first year that we uh, were able to finish all the inspections um, before for the annual licenses before December 31st, and for the uh, seasonal licenses, um, they're finished now. So we uh, had a really minimal number, probably only about half the premises did we have to reinspect uh, most of and and those that we did have to reinspect were pretty minor issues we didn't run into the kind of problems we've run into um, in the past few years so they seem to have gotten a handle on what's expected and pretty much <laughs> it's, it's, it's still a disparity between you know how prepared some of the establishments are than others but it's been a lot better, and, and it seems to be getting better. Every year, it, even though we go into the same establishment year after year, though, there'll be little things, but they've become little things now. 
and not not some of the significant issues that we ran into um, like three years ago. How what have we got coming up this year for projects? I and mean, we all we lack our new growth on the on the tax side or people. I know that we talked a little about the Marriott Hotel, but what else is out there that's coming that would be uh, on the commercial side? I think the biggest project that we've got coming is the uh, Clark School redevelopment, and we've issued a permit for some selective demo, but the permit for the project is, is still to come. Um, I, I've seen some preliminaries for um, like birds, you know, the, the old mobile station in the center of Florence is uh, got some solid plans on the table for it. Um, I've seen uh, another... Sorry, what's the name of that project again? Um, I mean, I know it's, it, do you know what the building... Um, no, I don't know what, the, what it's being called. Just for me to call it in the minutes. It's, okay, so yeah, it's, it's, it's number, right bird. It's okay. number 100 Main Street in Florence. Right, right, okay. Thanks. And um, we've seen I've seen some other preliminary plans. I'm I'm sort of drawn a blank on uh, projects because uh, we, we are hustling to keep up with the projects that we've got going now. But the most uh, the first six months of or the first seven months of fiscal year fourteen. Um, were came in ahead of the first seven months of fiscal year 13 so we're showing continued growth I mean, it's not it hasn't slowed down yet um, and the way the projects end up on the tax rolls they don't they don't get onto the tax rolls until um, what july 1st and so we'll see a, a number of them that are done and ready to go and, and have occupancy certificates that'll be on the tax rolls uh, I think both of those car dealerships are going to be, uh, um, they, they have occupancy certificates now. Which car dealerships you have uh, both again? Volkswagen and Kazen oh, yeah. Kazenzi Group, the Volkswagen and, and the Hyundai, Hyundai dealership. One of the projects we've seen some pretty firm plans for is the third office building at Atwood Drive. And I don't know what the, what number it's going to be, but there's, Two three-story buildings. Um, one is is both the, both of them are uh, built. The fit out for one of them is two of the three floors. The fit out of the second one is going to be all three floors, and the third building is going to be a four-story, um, slightly larger footprint building. And I am almost certain we'll see the permit application for that before the end of this fiscal year. Another project that's um, that we'll anticipate seeing a permit for is uh, Smith College is building, I think, five dorm buildings, small dorm buildings at the end of Paradise Road, and they're going to move. They're going to move one of the houses that that's uh, there. They're going to. Um, they've started on a new health center uh, off Belmont, and so the health center that's down at uh, the end of Paradise Road is going to get demolished, I think. Have they filed demolition for that yet, or did they do that a while ago to get the year? Uh, the, they don't need to wait. It's not, a, it's, not, uh, it's not on the list of significant structures, and it's less than 100 years old, so they wouldn't have to submit a, 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 a request. They, there wouldn't be a demo delay put on that. They avoided the demo delay for the house by uh, opting to move it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm late. It's okay. Um, just a uh, who's been giving us our his report, and we've just had a couple of questions on the um, latest projects or uh, projected and projected projects, including. Uh, Clark School, where there's a permit for the demo, and um, for 100 Main Street in Florence. Busy keeping up with a lot of projects right now. I'm just checking my minutes here. 100 We've, Main Street in Florence, the mobile station? The mobile station. We have a steady growth continuing with the occupancy permits already for Volkswagen and Hyundai. 
Um, there will be additional permits coming in before the end of the fiscal year for one Atwood Drive, including a three and four story building. The three story buildings are up. The, the next new building would be a four story. Oh, building. okay, including the other one. And the um, Smith College. Oh, I have a problem with my computer and it races things. For I just heard Smith down. College's inventory of this oh, morning. This morning. This morning. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, so but, um, and, and some of mine just erased here, so if you don't mind, I'll just say, you said there's going to be five dorms. Five small dorm buildings. Yeah, apartments they're described as, right? Okay, small dorms. 80 students. I thought 96. Okay. And they're replacing those behind the chapel, I think. Those the ones behind Helen Hills Hills Chapel. Those contemporary. Oh, right. Yeah. But those are those are just converted single, <coughs> single families, aren't they? I mean, uh, multiple multi families. Multi families. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the old health center won't require a demolition delay right. because it's not more than 100 years old. And I'd like to make okay. sure that when you put in the demo at Clark School that you put in selective interior demolition. Okay, so <laughs> there's a permit for selective interior demolition. Yes, all right, thank you. Uh, I talked to Corwin and he said they were like doing some deletting and some asbestos and stuff like inside the buildings. Mm -hmm. right. So it's not, the neighbors don't have to worry that the landscape's going to change. With what, I mean, it actually wasn't that stipulated that they were going to do they were going to keep silhouettes and exterior mm -hmm. fascia yeah. pretty much as is, and then all, everything is going to be retrofitted inside. Right, but I think we want to make sure that people are cons constant, or, you know, consistently right. um, reassured that that's still right. the plan. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions on, on that? On projects coming up? Yep. Yeah. Will we have any permits for this year? Oh, I have a right. Uh, this Paul Lewis is, is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. $91 million we're expecting in projected uh, building. No, that was so last year. Estimated cost of construction. I wrote, you need to change it to 2013. This is a history of the calendar year. I see, I see. So the report, this is a report yeah. based on the right. 2000. Do you have this electronically? I do. Yeah, I do. I you can send that to me. Sure. I'll attach I, it to the I sent it to Mary. I thought she was going to be doing the minutes. No, but so, but I'll, when I'll you get a chance sure to send it to me, I'll attach it on with the minutes. So how many, how many permits do you have pending currently? How many are? Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't, we don't keep track. Um, well, I'm trying to get a sense of a trend. He's, he's oh, I see what you mean. Um, what, I've, what I've done is I did the most recent um, assessment I did was uh, December 1st, 2012 to uh, January 31st, 2013, and compared that to December 13 to January 14, and we're 10% ahead of that same period. Looking at as looking at period by period, we're we're uh, not losing pace. Um, uh, it's it's a significant growth rate. I mean, it's it's more than I um, anticipated when I did my projections for uh, the, the, the uh, activity for um, fiscal year 14. We're ahead of that. Um, it's the so the trend is. We're ahead of it, 2014. You said. In. Uh, New construction, ground up stuff, or is it also, I mean, renovation was a big thing? Pretty much both ways. Really? Um, you know, we did, uh, in, in calendar year 2013, we did more single families than we've done um, since I have easy access to records. Um, Last year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, largely uh, on Village Hill, but... Right. Um, right. But also, you know, a significant number sprinkled into in infill um, there's also the development off of Burt's Pit Road, you know, uh, Emerson Way. Have you seen anything come from our most recent zoning revisions yet for lot size? Have you seen any infill lots starting to get? Uh, we have. It's uh, you know we're getting um, there are a lot of inquiries and there are a lot of proposals. It turns out that 
there may be some obstacles to construction of multifamilies uh, like sprinkler systems, but um, lots that um, weren't buildable before are now buildable. There's uh, the uh, the square footage requirements uh, are very small for the for the new lots, um, but I think what it does mean is there's an awful lot of uh, older lots that were uh, 50 feet of frontage and, and a 5,000 square foot area, and those are all going to be uh, prime for development. And uh, I think that they'll be able to fit a two-family unit on one of those lots. And how about the stretch code? Have you gotten any pushback with the stretch code? No, it's well, no, not anymore. It's it's a given at this point, and um, it's been know, a while now, hasn't it? Right. It's it's yeah. right now. The stretch code is actually a little bit behind the regular energy code, and uh, and so they're going. It is changing, and uh, there's a provision. Uh, to increase the requirements of the newest, newly adopted regular energy code, um, and there's some discussion about how much ahead of the new uh, energy code is the stretch code going to be. Um, it's it's doable. We've been tracking um, the ratings of the houses that are new houses that are built under the stretch code and. And even taking the most conservative, uh, even even the most uh, stringent proposal for stretch code, uh, way more than half of the houses that are being that have been built under our stretch code would pass the newest standards. And they'll be, you know, they'll be um, the houses will have to be tighter. I mean, the biggest uh, change in the in the proposal is the uh, amount of air changes per hour that's allowed. How tight the house is, um, but that's I think a matter of uh, you know, just paying more attention to detail. Um, I I suspect we'll be seeing a lot more air to air uh, heat exchangers where fresh air comes in and and. Uh, uh, stale air is exhausted and the heat is captured in the transition. Um, they aren't required now, um, but I think it's, it, it will bring up the efficiency of a particular building. You, you find contractors and designers keeping the pace with the code, is that right? They throw up to speed on them? And the they are, and, and we, we, we're fortunate, I think, we're having a lot, a lot of the uh, all new construction uh, one or two family homes need uh, a HERS rating, so they have to. The contractor has to hire a consultant to do to help with the plans and then to test the house as it goes along. And the HERS raters have be, have gotten a lot more experience, and there's some sort of uh, ways that people have figured out to build efficient houses, um, where each one isn't getting looked at necessarily as unique. And uh, um, and we've been able to provide, I think, a lot of feedback um, at the point when we do like a framing inspection. We have a presentation that we do if we see that it hasn't been done properly. And the more consistent it gets, the easier it is to do. And I, I think that you know in Massachusetts, the stretch code, you know, m way past half of the communities in Massachusetts have adopted the stretch code now. So it's become more um, more of a um, norm for builders. That's great. That's that's encouraging. Um, so, in addition to these, uh, I've always been curious about the additional duties for the building department, um, such as I think it's your department that needs to. Um, confirm whether sidewalks are clear or complaints are directed not to not to the building department. No, they go to the police department. Interestingly okay. enough, and they're the ones who can find if that doesn't happen. Okay. We deal we we deal with zoning complaints. 
and we do um, collaborate with uh, police department or the DPW or the health department or the fire department on on issues that may that we can that we have some uh, that we can help with. But um, we we primarily have building code and zoning issues to, to contend with. So an odd example might be for one of one of your zoning requirement duties is to enforce the adult use zoning. Mm -hmm. Does that come up at all? Yeah, there's there's a place on, we had to we did a review of a building on a place on Main Street, second floor, and I'm not I. I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the shop establishment. Therapy. Shop therapy. Yes. But their second floor has a um, has an adult section, and we uh, measured, measured it out it to make sure it wasn't and, and it more wasn't than too big. And, you know, how, how and big we, was? Say what? How big did it turn out to be? Um, about 700 square feet. Generously, you know, that was stretching the tape measure as far as it would go. There was a uh, the lighting for the for the we did. Um, have to put a stop to the flash lights, <laughs> um, but and uh, that was two different visits because you know there's a dis they, they had a misunderstanding we had a misunderstanding about flashing means going on and off and and on and off every ten seconds is not very much different from on and off every two seconds. But that was not related to the adult use zoning. That was that was to it just coincidentally had to do with the place that has a small adult section. Right. Mm -hmm. right. How about a topic near and dear to this committee? Chickens. How are we doing on chickens? <laughs> I think that we've, I, we've done pretty well. There lasts, it's a summertime issue, and it seems to be settling down. I think <laughs> the raccoons ate a lot of the problematic <laughs> chickens. The, uh, and some folks have, uh, um, some people are, there were some places where there was plenty of land to have as many chickens as they'd want, and um, we were able to sort of explain that to the people that live next door. Um, and I, I think that there'll be, I believe that there might be fewer people raising chickens this summer because I, don't, I think that there were some uh, problems with some that some of the folks had last summer. The, the blush of the newness and created a shakeout that. Probably that the chickens are required attention all day, every day, and, uh, yeah. and smell and all these. Just not set stuff. them and forget them. You know? Right. If there's, and if they're free range, the coyotes and the raccoons and the fox. Well, the I were a dog or cat. I had some, you know, backyard chickens when I was a lot younger, and I decided it was a lot easier to just buy raccoon food than to buy chicken food to feed the chickens, and the raccoons come and eat them later. I, I think I lost every single chicken to raccoons, so that, I mean, I think that that's part of how it's going to shake out. Mm -hmm. Were you called to look at the um, fire at the chicken coop on Massasoit Street? We were, but. Um, it wasn't enough of a structure to be of particular interest to us. I miss that. So did uh, the chickens. Marty, it, Marty Nathan and Elliot Fratkin's chicken, chicken coop burned burn to, to the ground. All were killed, I think, mm -hmm. right? A couple months ago. Bad day for the raccoons. I'll see you get so yeah your purviews cover porn stores, chickens, chicken coops, uh, hotels, dorms systems. It's an, it's an interesting grouping. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious that there's a, that's the first. Uh, so in terms of the inspection of shop therapy, um, is that the first inspection that you've had from your department of a? There's to a course that zoning. There are a couple other places in town, but you know it's pretty easy to make um, to be. It's pretty easy to be pretty to be sure about that they're small spaces, and we didn't have to do a formal inspection. This being on the second floor, and not something that we were uh, familiar with, was a, some a place we had we actually went and measured. But Are these complaint based, or because um, I'm trying to think what what triggers the uh, the inspection? It would be complaint driven because. Um, well, we would have to hear about it in some fashion or another because somebody, a place that sells anything, wouldn't have to meet building code requirements, different changes, if they changed from um, 
um, outdoor clothing to adult uh, entertainment. Selling is selling, so we wouldn't necessarily hear about it, but we we would if we if we got a complaint, we would certainly. Uh, investigate. I'm just curious, is that what happened in this case? It was, was the lighting that, oh, okay. that the lighting. tipped us off. And then while you were there, you pulled out your tape yeah. measure. Then. <laughs> and there, speaking <laughs> this and stuff. <laughs> well, that, the, okay. the porn regulations, I recall, focus mostly on the display of DVDs, which no one sells anymore. So, point in fact, actually, we, we had an arcane code within months of its ridiculous establishment my editorial remark on that, but the, the fact is, as I said, there was only one store in violation in the whole city according to the standards, and that was Pleasant That's Street Day. Right. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's, and... That's why we closed, right? Yeah, that's why we closed. No, we, I mean, we closed because no one has DVDs in And just like porn stores don't either. And right. they didn't make it for any other system. <laughs> and they made it for a store that literally has no business. Literally, and it never really cared about whether it had business. Right. So it was uh, it was one of the silly laws that we made based on politics and hysteria, and and it, and compounding the silliness is making <laughs> the building commissioner the enforcement authority by measuring, literally measuring distance and shelf use. Well, also viewing. I think it's your obligation to view the, um, <laughs> to view the well, related it's, it's, materials it's and the, determine if it's pornographic. It's our, it's, it's my responsibility, but I do de delegate. You delegate that <laughs> to the electrical inspector or who is that? <laughs> Actually, the plumbing inspector. Like, <laughs> the plumbing, right. That's no, the, the, it's one of the jobs that the most, the newest, uh, inspector in the department has to do it. I did it when I, was, I did it when I came, first started, and then now I'm able to pass it down. You know, of course, the state law requires you watch them from beginning to end without fast-forwarding and skipping, because it may have some social redeeming value at some point that you would miss. And your obliged in order to deem it pornographic is to view it from start to finish. I don't know if that includes the trailers, but so. It's, yeah. I think we take a, a we, we step back a little bit. I, I, it, it isn't an issue in this town. It's, it's okay, well that's interesting. Is there any other, uh, are there any other questions related to either the report from last year or anything ongoing? Nope. You, you guys were able to keep up with inspections? We are. You're not getting, uh, you're you're getting beat to death. Then. We're, no, we're doing well. We're uh, we have good people. You know, I mean, we have really good people. We're. we're uh, I, I, think I have a question actually, right. um, because I, as far as I know, and maybe this, I'm not sure if there's a link to it on your on your page and the city page, but each of these permits is actually viewable to the public. Mm -hmm. So a person can go in and. Look at, is it sorted by address? If a person wanted to see, for example, if they saw that there was something going on at a property next to them? I'm not as familiar with that gateway as, as I might be. It's only accessible from outside the city, and I don't look a lot once I get home. Okay. Um, okay. But the public should know that there it, is a way that they can determine yeah. whether there yeah. are permits pulled right. for. Yeah. Um, the work being done on their own property, well, they should see that by the, the own permit sheet. No, it is it is it is available online, and I I've heard that if you are careful with the way that you, with the drop downs that you choose, it's not difficult to navigate, but that it may be a little confusing. Um, and one of the things that we we do notice is that. People's idea of an address is maybe different from the DPW's idea of an address. And our unique identifier is the map and lot. So. Right. I do, from my recollection, though, from going in there a couple times, I went in and looked at it, and you, I think a person mm -hmm. can put in the address. Do you know that now? Or have you done that at all from the, no, from the office? I'm going there now. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. a person can put in the address and then yeah. see. I mean, what ninety nine percent of the time, the address that everybody's on the same page as far as the address goes. Right. And I'm more inclined to use the map a lot just because I got them. 
Right. Mm -hmm. And they use the street address. We may be able to do both. But you could see then that all that any of these permits, building, electrical, plumbing, mm -hmm. gas permits, mm -hmm. sheet metal is a new permit required, right? I mean, that's not that's, something that That is a pretty new permit, yeah. Right. And that's a new license, too. Mm -hmm. So we can check that on the Board of Registration. Okay. Well, anybody have any further questions for Mr. Hasbrook? No, thank you. Okay, there being none, no, we'll see you in a few months, I guess. So All right. Take a look at that calendar. And that thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, I can find to take the minutes as, follow, as well as follow along the agenda. So they're, you know, they will um, be as thoroughly as you while conducting this meeting. And I'll ask then. Is there any new business that the chair did not reasonably anticipate would be discussed here? Okay, hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to Okay, that concludes today's meeting of the Public Safety Committee. Thank you. So, Maureen, do you want to go? Are you going to march in the parade? Oh, Lou, well, that's quite what you mentioned. Um, um, sprinklers with multi-cameras? Where does that start?